Hello and welcome to the Breakthrough Your Limiting Beliefs Summit, where we're going to find clarity, understand your purpose, and quickly remove blocks to create an amazingly authentic life. I'm your host, Daniel Stather, and today we have with us a wonderful guest. Her name is Donna Bond. She is a personal transformation consultant, a spiritual master, her mentor, and professional life and business coach. Welcome, Donna, to the summit. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me. It's really my pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, terrific. And so uh, if you wouldn't mind just sharing with the audience, like maybe your whatever you feel guided, but, uh, what was your journey like or how you got to this point? Yeah, well, I was a corporate marketing executive for 28 years in the industry of hospitality. And when I turned 44, it was a really significant time of my life because that's how old my father was mm -hmm. when he died. And so suddenly I was in a really big rush to figure out my purpose and to figure out what my life was about. Um, and I was really caught in a trap of repetition. I was caught in all of my limiting beliefs, actually, about my life. And it just felt like I was on a conveyor belt. And I was just going through the motions over and over and over again. And I have always been a spiritual seeker my whole life. But it was really a part of me that I sort of kept hidden in the back closet and I would take it out on the weekends, you know, and I would uh, do spiritual studies and read books about spirituality. And while I was in my miserable upset, I went to go see a psychic. And I had done this many, many times before. And I had gone crying to this woman about how unhappy I was in my life and crying to her that I need to find my purpose. And she said, Donna, they're spelling it out for me, spiritual psychology. Hmm. And I said, what in the hell is spiritual psychology? Because I had no idea. <laughs> and one thing led to another. And after I worked through my limiting beliefs, my 101,000 rebuttals for why it didn't make any sense at all in my life, I enrolled myself in a master's program in spiritual psychology at the University of Santa Monica. And that was the beginning of a life-changing journey. And that was back in 2013. So um, probably about a year into my studies, uh, it became very clear to me that I could no longer stay in the role that I was in. And um, through some divine guidance that I was given that was super crystal clear, I quit my job. Uh, I stepped down from a very prestigious, uh, very accomplished 28 year long career in hospitality. And I hung out a shingle as a marketing consultant for a little while, because truthfully at that time in my life, there wasn't one bone in my body that believed it was possible for me to do anything other than hotel sales and marketing. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting <laughs> that you ended that way because, you know, you want to talk about, um, identity crisis, right, is is really in a, limit, a limiting belief. And that's where you were at, right? Totally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah so, and we talk about it that way. But yes, uh, an identity crisis for sure. Right. And we really find ourselves like attaching ourselves to an identity, right? And so when we break that identity, there's real resistance. <laughs> yes. And there's grief around it. You know, I was speaking with a client yesterday who is moving through part of an identi identity crisis herself. And, you know, we're such multifaceted beings and there are so many different aspects to our personality. And, you know, we have all of these different archetypes, all of these different personas that operate within us. And... There's a process, I think, that we go through, even when we're letting go of those less attractive aspects, there's a process of grief. There's a process of real 
painful letting go around who we know ourselves to be, regardless of where we might be moving towards, which looks like a beautiful sunny horizon. Yeah, that's interesting, right? Um, Because we know, you know, after being there, right, what it looks like on the other side. But when you when you're making that transition, it's real tough. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of tears on my part, boy. I'll tell you. I mean, I was really in the mold of a corporate marketing executive, and with all due respect to all corporate marketing executives worldwide, right? Uh, the first time it sort of emerged from my consciousness that I wanted to be a spiritual teacher, I was like, oh my God, who said that? <laughs> like, literally, who, who said that? <laughs> and it was one of those really altering, shocking confrontations to my own awareness to really make this discovery within myself. Yeah, that's that's neat that, you know, we can look back and say, wow, you know, it was it was challenging to break that but like what what now that you've gone through it what what are some of the things that you could share about like that experience to make you know because i think a lot of people are at that point now they know that their spirit is calling them for more their soul is trying to get them to see the signs um what, what would you tell somebody uh one step at a time one step at a time and this is where we can get in trouble and this is where i think a lot of people give up is when we begin giving ourselves permission, first of all, you know, I can put that on the list, like giving yourself permission to really imagine something different, imagine something amazing, imagine something that you would love. It takes no more energy to begin to visualize something that would uplift us and something that we would be pinching ourselves to experience than it does to like I call it dreaming up a drama than it does to be dreaming up the dreaming up the drama of all of the negative things that could happen or that could go wrong and and most of us have a tendency to just do that and stay in that energy but giving ourselves the permission to dream a little bit and to imagine and to make stuff up, make stuff up. Like what would be, what blows your skirt up? I always like to say it like that. <laughs> and where we get, where we shut ourselves down is then we think, oh my God, there's 151,000 steps that I have to take to get from here to there and I don't know any of them and I don't know how to do any of them. So I'm gonna call the whole thing off and I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my corner. And that's what we do. Oh. But when we can say to ourselves, okay, if I'm gonna go from Los Angeles to Boston, for example, there's a lot of different ways that I could go, right? There's a million different ways that I could go. And sometimes we always want the most logical, quickest, most efficient way, but perhaps logical and quick and efficient isn't going to be the richest, juiciest, most expansive path that we could chart. So it's, really assessing, well, where am I now? And from where I'm sitting, what could I do? What's one move that I could make? What's one step that I could take with what I've got from where I am? And do you play chess? I do. I haven't played in a while, but I do. <laughs> Me either. I'm, I'm new at it. I'm learning. My husband's teaching me. But one of the things that I find so fascinating with chess is very much like life. With one move on the board, the entire landscape rearranges itself, mm -hmm. right? Like the whole board becomes something completely different when one guy moves one, you know, thing, man, what are they called? Um, well, they all have different names, but 
uh, like rook, queen, king, you name it, horse, <laughs> knight. <laughs> so depending on who moves and depending on where they move, literally it reorders the entire landscape of the board. And I think this is a very important point that we overlook about our life is that every time we take one step forward, everything gets rearranged. Mm -hmm. And so when we sit here and we plan out, you know, the 50 step plan, and we've got all of our moves pre-organized and set forth, and then we try to force ourselves to stick with the plan, because that's the plan, we end up forcing ourselves on life. And when we force ourselves on life, we get hurt. Rather than recognizing, gosh, you know, maybe there's an option that's going to present itself tomorrow that wouldn't have presented itself had I not taken this step yesterday. Yeah, so true. I you, you kind of clarified two points there. Like one is like um having the um the belief that it's okay to let things happen naturally mm. instead of having to plan it. And the other thing that you kind of mentioned was that really having that ability to let go of um, control and have trust. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. Cause well, I think I like, like <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I like your summary. Oh, let okay. Go, let go of control and have trust. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's what I heard. Um, yeah, so that's great because um, we we find that, especially in the corporate world, and you can relate, right? You always had to do a, a daily task or all these different things, and things had to be so outlined, organized, and scheduled, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when when um, when you were breaking through this mold and trying to find your way, uh, what were other things that came up that you 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 thought, well, you know, looking back, this was definitely a limiting belief, or this was really causing me angst? Um, what I'm being invited to share right now, which I think is really important, that connects to your question, but it's a little bit of a side veer. Um, sometimes we don't need to know that we're trying to get to Boston. Like we don't need to know the exact idea or the location or the destination. Um, but what I find is that, and, and this was definitely true for me, if you had said, oh yeah, you're going to be a coach, a personal development, spiritual coach, and you're going to sit with people one-on-one -on -one in these sacred, private, intimate, vulnerable conversations, mm -hmm. I would have said, oh yeah, mm, that." that's not going to happen. Like that's never, gonna, that's never happening. It, it just was so far out of the realm of anything that I understood in my life to be possible. But what was important and what I did know, I call them pillars. Like I had a couple of pillars that I knew I was moving towards. I knew I wanted to work for myself. Right. I knew I wanted a lot of freedom. I wanted to be my own boss. I knew that I wanted to make a more meaningful contribution to the world. So like I had all these pillars that was the framework for the direction that I was moving in without defining like, oh yeah, I'm going to be a spiritual coach working with spiritual psychology. So I just, I feel like that's really important to say, because this goes back to what you just said about letting go of control and having trust. The universe had a much bigger plan for me than anything that I would have been able to imagine on my own. And had I not taken my hands off the wheel, I wouldn't have ever arrived here, you know? Because when I did quit my job originally, 
um, I hung out a shingle as a marketing consultant. I didn't hang out a shingle as a coach because I didn't know I was going to be a coach. You know, that really hadn't revealed itself yet. So I think that's another really important piece of the recipe. Um, the universe is always speaking to us in every moment. The universe is showing us the doorway to walk through. And oftentimes we'll say, well, that doesn't look like my doorway. That, th that doesn't look like the doorway that, that I, you know, had in mind. So I'm going to just skip over that. That's how I got to Costa Rica. The universe cleared the path for me to be here. And it is totally, Daniel, 1000% <laughs> out of the realm of anything that I wanted, anything that I think makes sense in my own life. And it is certainly um, a clash with my personality, to be honest. Like I like high heel shoes and expensive pocketbooks, you know? Being in the middle of the rainforest jungle, I, I got bare feet right now, <laughs> you know? I'm usually parading around in, in, a, in a tank top <laughs> and this is where the universe wanted me. So I kept saying yes. And I know that I'm here for a reason, but there was really nothing inside of me that said like, oh, this is my dream. Or, you know, I wanna go live in the jungle. No, that's, that's beautiful because I think, um... That, that is maybe a, just a living belief in and of itself that we need to know what the next step is or the 50th step from now in order to really <clears throat> feel safe enough to trust. Yeah. Feel oh. safe enough to trust. Yeah. There's a lot of wisdom in that. Yeah, right. And so, um, yeah, that's a great share because I think that, you know, if you're even afraid to like what I used to say was you're afraid to pull the car out of the driveway to even start on the journey, then um, <clears throat> how are you going to be on the journey when you don't know which way to turn, whatever, because you don't trust yet? Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. And um, so now when it came to, I know yours is a little bit different because you were kind of already at that higher end uh, earning potential, but for somebody who is maybe not, have been there now maybe they're venturing out to say well i do want to work for myself but don't have that type of um belief yet into what's possible what how would you direct them to say well no the, this is something that you can have or you know to break through that limiting belief yeah um i love this question and without going to science on it. Um, I wanna talk about being the match to what it is we want, um, being the vibrational match to what it is that we want. And um, I had a profound uh, visceral real life experience that taught me this. Mm. Uh, it was the last morning of my women's retreat and this is years ago in California and it was a beautiful morning and the sun was out and I was skipping around my backyard and I had an encounter with a mint plant that was growing in my raised bed garden and I just was sort of allowing myself to be engulfed with the fragrance of the mint and it was like that perfect emerald green that was so alive. You know, it was early enough in the season that none of the leaves had begun to turn brown yet. And this plant held this aliveness. And in the moment that I was witnessing this plant, I was given a great gift and 
I know this sounds a little esoteric and a little bit weird, but I became the plant. I recognized that I was part of the plant and it was, it was big and loud and like a, like a boom, you know, in my consciousness that I became this plant and it taught me about abundance in that moment because that's really what I was engaging with was the abundance of this mint plant, the abundance of the fragrance and the abundance of the leaves and the veins on the leaves and the richness of the color. And as I marveled at it, I was it. Now, how does this relate to your question? How does this relate to the question of money? The question of like, I went from having a direct deposit paycheck that had multiple zeros in it, right? To now I got to turn the, the wheel all on my own. Our consciousness is an abundant well. It is, it is an infinite spring that can never run out. And our consciousness is everything that we see all around us all the time. Our consciousness is you and me. Our consciousness is this desk, this table, that plant, the sky, all of the jungle that's out before me. So what's helpful and the little tip and the trick that I'm sharing with everybody in this moment is as I rest my attention on the abundance that I see everywhere, I then become the vibrational match to abundance. And as I become the vibrational match to abundance, Abundance can't help itself, but find its way to me. Does that make sense? Like, did oh, I, yeah. did I land it? Yeah. So Literally. It's like, what do I, what am I experiencing ab an abundance of right now? I am an, I'm experiencing an abundance of Daniel. <laughs> I'm experiencing an abundance of air. Right? I'm experiencing an abundance of thread in the carpet, an abundance of green in the wood. And on and on and on this goes. Abundance is everywhere. So the inner shift that we want to make inside of ourselves is to see it, is to just open our awareness to the fact that it already exists. So people might be looking at their bank account and what do they do? They look at their bank account and they're like, wah, wah, right? Wah, wah, there's, there's, there's nothing in there that's good enough. And that's where we land with it, that it's not good enough. But what if we start giving some love to what's in there? and appreciating and having gratitude for whatever's in there. And then we're the match to that. This is a big mindset shift. It, it, it's not easy, right? And I'm not gonna lie and say that it was easy. This has been uh, an absolute part of my journey going from having direct deposit for 28 years to moving into a space where I, I'm not going to say it's all on me because that's also part of the limiting belief. Mm -hmm. Part of the limiting belief is that it's all on me, that I got to do it. And um, are you familiar with the work of Dr. David Hawkins? Yep. Power versus force. Yes. Right? Yeah. The spectrum of consciousness, even though it's not called that. But so he... Uh, proved through kinesiology that all of our emotions 
vibrate at a particular frequency. And the lower, denser, heavier emotions are emotions like shame, guilt, grief, even pride can be a heavier, lower, dense frequency. Mm-hmm. Well, when we're experiencing the frequency of those heavy emotions, there's a natural contraction, constriction. When we're in a space of constriction and contraction, nothing's getting in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nothing's getting in, right? right? But when we're higher up on the scale and we're swimming around in joy and peace and aliveness, we're in a place of expansion. We're in a place that's closer to the truth of who we are as the energy of love, the energy of divine beings having a human experience. But when we're riding around in those higher states, we're naturally in a place of expansion, place of openness, place of receiving. So I started playing a game with myself because Mm -hmm. I'm the daughter of a workaholic, grew up to be a workaholic. I know all about what it means to like put your nose to the grindstone and Mm -hmm. work your ass off, which is how I got myself a frozen shoulder, a breast cancer diagnosis, and what landed me on this path. (laughs) I made an agreement with myself that one day a month, this is early, like this is when I first started out as a coach. One day a month, I was going to take a day in the middle of the week, like a Tuesday or a Wednesday, right? When you're supposed to be working. (laughs) And I was going to goof off. I was going to go out and play with my girlfriends. I was going to go to the spa or I was going to, you know, go shopping or do whatever. And Daniel, when I used to do that, what would happen is I would be driving home at the end of the day after a day of play. And I would inevitably get a phone call from a client who was telling me they're ready to start their coaching journey, or they're ready to do another coaching journey, or, you know, somebody's finding me for the very first time. And it began to occur like that, because I was creating that space and aligning myself with the energy of lightness, the energy of play and freedom. And I'm hearing my guides right now say, are you listening to yourself talk right now, Donna? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, So that's a little tip that I have. You know, when we're squirreling away at our desk, and worrying about who's coming and what's going to happen, we're not in a space to allow ourselves to connect with whoever that is. Yeah, so true. I mean, you know, it's funny because you talk about like your guys are talking to you, but it's talking to me too. I think we all fall into that play. Like we're just that workaholic type and uh, just want to keep going at it when we really just need to step back and, and allow. And uh, yeah, what a pivotal point, but that was a great story how you you brought that, you know, analogy through a description that really kind of landed for hopefully most of us. And, um, you know, so so when you're now traveling through this journey and everything and you get to the point of, um, uh, you know, well, I want to back up maybe a little bit because a lot of people really have a tough time, you know, understanding their purpose or know what their purpose is. And that can be a big block in and of itself because we're frustrated that we hey i'm this old so far and i still haven't kind of you know gotten anywhere or i want to do something i love so what would you talk to somebody and give them advice about that yeah yeah boy i spent uh so much of my life looking for my purpose and um i almost want to change the language in how we relate to purpose because the way that I view it now and the way that I experience it now is 
more about a feeling of being on purpose. And it's not about finding my purpose. So my purpose and your purpose and everybody's purpose is to be you. There's how many coaches are there on the planet, right? You're a coach, I'm a coach, everybody's a coach, coach, right? There's there's millions of coaches everywhere. There's millions of spiritual teachers everywhere. What I bring to what I do, the expression of me, the expression of my essence, the expression of my presence, the expression of my personality that is infused through that essence, that is my purpose. That is my purpose. And so it's not a job. Everyone, it's not a job. Your purpose is not a job. You're not going to make a paycheck off your purpose. Your purpose is your expression. And so if you're a doctor or a lawyer or a hotel executive, it's how are you expressing in that role as you? And that goes beyond, of course, any role and into the relationships that we have, right? How am I expressing with my loved ones as a wife, as a sister, as a daughter, as a mother, you know, it's, it's those beautiful, unique, exquisite, divine snippets of you that can only come through you because you are the only one and only you that is here in this life on this planet at this time. Yeah. And that's the hard thing, right? Is, is really getting ourselves over that hurdle, uh, particularly when we are looking to express within a particular profession, then we can get into um, com the comparison game, mm. right? And the comparison game is a lose-lose game every time. It's a lose-lose game every time. But if I can pay less attention to that and pay more attention to what is it inside of me that has to be shared, that has to be shared, that I would share anyway, because it lights me up, because it blows my skirt up, because it, it enlivens my personality as I'm sharing it or expressing it. That's what we're looking for. And our limiting beliefs often are in the way of that. And I'll I'll give you a story. Here we go. Eleven eleven. I love that. It's eleven eleven uh, in Central Time right now. Um, I thought when I left my job that I wanted to be a speaker, and um, there's a lot of things that didn't align with me about being a speaker because I'm kind of a homebody and I didn't want to travel that much. And there's there's some things in my value system that that just didn't line up with, but. Um, when I was in kindergarten, I had a, I can't believe that I'm, a, I'm about to tell this story. I've never told this story publicly. And I don't know why it's come out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm at a round table in the very back of the room, chatting away right, to whoever, chatting away to whoever I was talking to. And the teacher called me out in the middle of the class and told me to stop talking. And now I'm sitting all the way in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. And then she says, and try sitting like a lady. Mm -hmm. 
And I could hear, like to this day, I can still hear all of the metal desks, because I'm old, pushing away, like pushing their chairs away from their desks. And everyone in the class turning around to see my bloomers because I was squatting on my chair with my skirt up for the world to see. Mm. Yes. So that was a very deep scar, a very deep scar about not speaking up, about keeping your mouth closed, particularly in a public place, mm. because I suffered some deep humiliation in that moment uh, from a teacher. And as the years went on and went by, I had a, a similar experience when I was in high school, having to stand up at a podium. And I read a poem about a boy that I was in love with and everybody laughed. And that also closed down my voice. And I'm sure there's other experiences, you know, if I thought about it that I could share. Life sets us up to grow through the things that we've come here to grow through in order to realize our gifts. And I have a long history of being told to keep my mouth closed. <laughs> <laughs> my point in sharing this is those are our clues. Those are the clues to unlocking our true expression, to unlocking the feeling of being on purpose in the world is those things get sort of shut down within us because our soul is here to work through it, to evolve and grow as a result of the discovery process of what happens as we break through those limitations and we break through those imaginary barriers that we are that that keep us in shackles yeah yeah that was that was a beautiful analogy i know that you never shared that story but that was that was quite in, impactful because um i think we don't even realize like how many hundreds and hundreds of different occurrences that happen just in our everyday life growing up that really are just limiting belief after limiting belief after limiting belief yes yeah 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 and we don't even realize it because that becomes our operating system that becomes our operating system and then that's how we operate and we don't even realize that we're limiting ourselves or we're holding ourselves back until i don't know i think it's like sort of built in you know we wake up at midlife there's like this inner ding this inner gong that goes off and then we're like hmm what is life really about and we we have to make that hero's journey and set out on the quest for finding who we truly are. Yeah, so true. Um, now, going back to maybe um, your journey, what you share with clients, um, how uh, specific do you get? Like, do you, do you get like with, um, is, is certain practices like a go-to thing for you, like journaling, meditation, mindfulness, any of those? What, what would be some uh, tidbits you could share there? Yeah, so I work with a modality called spiritual psychology, and I hold a master's in spiritual psychology with an emphasis in consciousness, health, and healing that I earned at the University of Santa Monica over a course of five years. Um, I also got my coaching certification with them as well as my soul-centered facilitation certification with them. And as a matter of fact, I'm going back to audit uh, their second year lab in like three weeks, which is, you know, one of the things that I think is really important with whoever you're working with is that the recognition that there's no destination to arrive to when you're on this path, that we are all always growing and evolving and changing. And I do a lot of my own work because that's how I 
have a visceral understanding of what it is I'm then leading a client through. It's I'm not leading a client through anything that I haven't already been through. And having crossed a lot of um, really scary terrain in leaving a very prestigious corporate career and finding my way into you know entrepreneurship, there was a lot of big leaps that I had to make. Um, I have a very vast toolbox that was created ultimately uh, by Drs. Ron and Mary Holnick at the University of Santa Monica uh, that are what we know as the principles and practices of spiritual psychology. And each of those principles and practices in their own way uh, is a class unto itself. You know, e everything is uh, rich and deep and exploratory. And, you know, one of the first uh, principles is that I'm deciding which one I want to share. <laughs> the idea that we are all spiritual beings making this epic human adventure and not the other way around. And when we can begin to see our life through the lens of what we call the spiritual context, we begin to see things through the lens of our true nature. And our true nature is the energy of love. And so really what we're doing is we're seeing through the lens of love. And when we can begin seeing ourselves that way, that is a very first big step towards how we're going to begin to relate to the rest of the world and how the world is going to begin to relate to us. So um, at the University of Santa Monica, they call this seeing the loving essence. And in my world, I've renamed it to big acknowledgement. And it is this acknowledgement that whoever you are, whatever you've done, it doesn't matter your upbringing, your culture, your nationality, your the color of your skin, how much money you make. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's the knowingness that we are the same because we are all spiritual beings on this epic human adventure together. And in that, there is a profound and beautiful recognition that we're all on this journey together. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I, I totally concur. I learned that in my energy healing school about, you know, we're spirit first and then the human body gets developed out of that spirit. So, um, yeah, that's, that's just beautiful to share that because people, it's, it's interesting if you've never heard that before to make that shift now to think that, no, oh, you're, you're really, you know, more than just this physical body. So, yeah. yeah. And that, that part of us <clears throat> is infinite, that is the part of us that is, uh, limitless, the part of us that will go on forever because it is energetic. And Einstein taught us energy is neither created or destroyed. It just reinvents itself right into different expressions. Mm -hmm. And so right now in this life on this planet, at this time, your expression is whoever your personality is, right? I'm the expression of Donna Bond right now. And I'm going to have fun doing that. Mm. And I think that this is a way that we can not take things so seriously sometimes, right? Like yeah. just take the pressure off a little bit and lighten up, lighten up uh, to be more congruent with the lightness of our spirit which has no weight. Yeah, I love that, right? That kind of, it's just a freeing thought in and of itself. 
right? Just, just lighten up and, and, you know, be your spirit. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So one final question for you. Um, what would you describe uh, somebody that's having an amazingly authentic life? Mm. Um, somebody who is fully embracing all of them. And, you know, we all have our pretty polished parts that we show to the outside world. And then we also have our you know, messy, unkept, shadowy, dark secret sides that exist in all of us. We have our divine nature that is this limitless, energetic drop of all that is. We are a drop of all that is. And so somebody who's living an authentic life is somebody who's got their arms and their heart around all of that. And that is recognizing that it's all of it. It's all of it. And, you know, 48 hours ago, I don't know, there was some weird, when Mercury, Mercury was trying to go direct, there's all kinds of like icky, yucky, crappy, yuck on the planet. I went through it. I was, I was having my own limiting beliefs come up and having to work with myself. Um, one of the spiritual psychology principles that we work with is how you relate to the issue is the issue, mm -hmm. how you relate to yourself while you're going through the issue. That's the opportunity. So I was not as kind and gentle and loving with myself as I know myself can be. So that brought in some deeper reflection with myself. And, you know, I work with a coach and I'm grateful to have her reflecting those things back to me. I have always done, done better in my life with that guidance, you know, that support system, that reflection, um, and that cheerleader, that person who is holding for you when you can't hold for yourself. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I got off track, but embracing all of it. That's my answer to your question. And like loving ourselves through all of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to uh, just, what I heard was just to be gentle with yourself no matter what you're going through because it's all for your growth and it's all for your benefit. Yes. Yeah, so great. And um, so you also... Uh, graciously want to share a free offer with us if you wouldn't just mind just 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 describe, describe that for our audience please yeah well thank you daniel um so i wrote a book a couple of years ago called original wisdom harness the power of the authentic you and when you click below the video you can enter yourself to receive a complimentary digital copy of the book uh, that we will send to you and we'll have a random drawing where I will select one person in the continental U.S. who will receive a signed hard copy of Original Wisdom. So thank you so much for sharing your email address with me and um, if you want to follow what I'm up to that's the best way to do that. So great. Yes. And so, um, so hopefully everybody enjoyed their time here and thank you, Donna, so much for being on the summit. It was great to have you. Daniel, thank you for putting all of this together and for your tireless efforts in really curating a tremendous group of speakers and teachers and coaches and leaders in the consciousness space who all hold the shared intention of uplifting the planet so thank you so much for the work that you're doing in the world uh, well thank you for your kind words and it's a labor of love and i'm glad to do it and uh so for everybody that um is part of the summit uh don't forget you do have the advantage of taking the uh 
free up uh, VIP access where you can have all this great content at your fingertips at any time. And of course, um, we have more great speakers coming up and wherever you tuned in from, whether it's day or night, I want to bid you a good day or a good night. And until next time, take care. Bye for now.